Welcome to Little Known Black History Facts. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. The Aunt Jemima Story. Who is the real Aunt Jemima? Many black women have played the role of Aunt Jemima since the inception of the character. For little pay and to the benefit of the companies that use them, Aunt Jemima was portrayed by black females at Aunt Jemima restaurants, in advertising and amusement parks. Chris L. Rutt and Charles Underwood developed the formula to a ready-mixed, self-rising pancake flour and were looking to employ an African-American woman as a mammy archetype to promote their new product. Rutt, one of the company's co-founders, got the idea for a name and logo after watching a vaudeville show in which the performer sang a song called Aunt Jemima, wearing an apron, head bandana, and blackface. Aunt Jemima is based on the common enslaved mammy image, a plump black woman wearing a headscarf who is a devoted and submissive servant. Her skin is dark and dewy with a pearly white smile. The term aunt and uncle in this context was a Southern form of address used with older enslaved peoples. The two founders of Aunt Jemima, in need of money, sold the company to the R.T. Davis Milling Company of St. Joseph, Missouri. From there, the company tried to find someone to be a living trademark for the company. The R.T. Davis Milling Company introduced the Aunt Jemima brand in 1889. Nancy Green, a former slave from Kentucky, was the first spokesperson hired by the company to portray Aunt Jemima as an advertising character when she appeared at the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago. Nancy Green was a storyteller, a cook, an activist, and the first of several African-American women hired to promote a corporate trademark as Aunt Jemima. Her job was to operate a pancake cooking display. After the expo, Green was offered a lifetime contract to adopt the Aunt Jemima moniker and promote the pancake mix. This marked the beginning of a major promotional push by the company that included thousands of personal appearances and Aunt Jemima merchandising. Nancy Green maintained her job with Davis Milling until her death in 1923. She was still working as Aunt Jemima at the time. Green was a huge success, awarded medals and certificates by fair organizers. She went on tour, appearing at countless country fairs, flea markets, food shows, and local grocery stores. Her arrival often heralded by large billboards featuring her image and the caption, as in town, honey. Her career allowed her the financial freedom to become an activist and engage in anti-poverty programs. Green was one of the organizers of the Olivet Baptist Church in Chicago. She was one of the first African-American missionary workers. Green used her stature as a spokesperson to become a leading advocate against poverty and in favor of equal rights for individuals in Chicago. Green died on August 30th, 1923 at the age of 89 in Chicago when a car collided with a laundry truck and hurtled onto the sidewalk where she was standing. In 1926, the Quaker Oats Company purchased the brand from the Davis Company. Following Green's work as Aunt Jemima, the Quaker Oats Company no longer used a single woman to portray the role. They used different actors, many assigned regionally. However, like Nancy Green, these women were paid to play the role of a smiling, happy Aunt Jemima and to tell stories of the good old plantation days. Although depictions varied over time, they were still portrayed in the common attire and physical features of the Mammy character. Lillian Richard, a native of Folk, Texas, was hired to portray Aunt Jemima in 1925 and remained in the role until she suffered a stroke in 1947. Anna Robinson was hired to play Aunt Jemima at the 1933 Century of Progress Chicago World's Fair. Anna Short Harrington, born in 1897 in Marlboro County, South Carolina, began her career as Aunt Jemima in 1935. Harrington continued to play the role for 14 years. Ethel Harper was Aunt Jemima during the 1950s in person, in print, and in media. 
She was the first Aunt Jemima to be depicted on television and the final living person basis for the Aunt Jemima image until it was changed to a composite in the 1960s. She worked as a traveling Aunt Jemima on behalf of the Quaker Oats Company, giving presentations at schools, churches, and other organizations. Rosie Lee Moore also portrayed the role of Aunt Jemima during the 1950s. Her reign as Aunt Jemima is significant because she was the last living Aunt Jemima. For decades, Nancy Green and her successors traveled the country, making and selling pancakes, singing old spirituals, addressing service clubs, and raising money for charity. When the Quaker Oats Company bought the R.T. Milling Company, they trademarked the logo, making it one of the longest running logos and trademarks in the history of American advertising. The Aunt Jemima logo has changed six times over its 133 year history. On June 17, 2020, the Quaker Oats Company announced that the Aunt Jemima brand would be replaced with a new name and image. The image was removed from packaging and the product name was changed to the Pearl Milling Company. Until next time, if you like little known history facts as I do, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Press the bell to be notified of future uploads. Thank you for watching.